with better sacrifices than these. We thank God for the read of the word for his bless. Today's, today's lesson is powered by the blood. Amen. And on this week, when I realized, I was like, okay, when do I speak? You know, I was looking at my calendar. I was like, oh, Lord, it's the first Sunday. <laughs> And I said, well, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Um, it's the first Sunday. And the more I thought about it was the first Sunday, I said, ooh, and we're having communion. And I began to think about what communion is and thinking about, like, we, we take the, the bread and remembrance of his body and we drink the wine and remembrance of his blood. And then I began to think on the blood. You know, the bread is important too, but we also, we think of, we always talk about the blood and being powered by the blood. But when I think of it, you know, uh, sometimes we can get to the point where we we can make communion, communion a ritual. And people forget the real meaning of communion. Yes. While we're doing communion, and it's more than okay, this was an ordinance of our church, and this is what Jesus said as the his the last supper before his death, to drink, to eat, and drink of the body, to eat of the bread of the body, and to drink of the wine in remembrance of his blood. Mm -hmm. But when we really, really dig deep in this, and we think about what communion really is and what being powered by the blood means to us, we give it a different thought and we don't think about this is just something we do and it's not a ritual, it's something that Jesus actually put in place before his death. Yeah. It's being partakers of his death in the sacrifice that he made for us. And some people try to say it's a little paganistic, but it's not. It's because Jesus actually put this together. He told us to do this. So it's not a pagan thing. So when we think about the bread and it's his body, I'm going to get to the blood part, but I want to talk about the bread a little bit. This all has to do with communion and being powered by the blood. And when we think about the bread and the remembrance of his body, it's more than just his physical body. It's the fact that he came into this world. He left his home, came into this world to be born, to grow up, to experience and walk amongst us the same way we do, the way we had to be born and live through life. But yet he had this journey and he had a mission to do. And he didn't just, he walked. And it's not like he walked to the corner store to get a loaf of bread. <laughs> they walked from town to town. It's like walking from Plainfield to Somerset. Mm -hmm. And then walking from, you know, distance walking, not around the corner walking, journeying. Who knows what all happened, what all they had to carry with them, food, and how their feet felt. And he did all of this. He walked across and preached and teach all of this for us, for love. He came here and to fulfill the assignment that he had on him. And then he went and he died on the cross and he took the place of the most worst person in the world at those times. I would say he probably was the worst. And a person who tormented many people and disrupted. But he went and died on the cross, which was the most horrible death that, for that. That was torture. And it was a place, when they placed him on the cross, it was a lot of, he wasn't the only one on the cross. It was lots of other people on the cross. And it was a place that had to smell because it took time for people to die on the cross when they hung up that way. If they don't just die immediately, it's like a slow, agonizing death. Okay? And so when we think about, he did all of that for us. And if you think about it now, the more you think about the communion, it's almost like a love story in a way, right? Because it was all because of love that he did this for yeah. us, right? Yeah. And so now he's there and he's dying on the cross. 
and we took the bread in remembrance of all he's done for us, all he did for us. And now they pierce him in the side. And you know, like, I think of piercing as really as lightly because I have pierced ears. Come on, pierced. To me, that's, a, a, I pierce a needle in my hand. Like, this wasn't more of a pierce. This was stabbing, jabbing him yep. because they wanted to make sure he, he was, was dead. dead. Yep. But people yeah. don't realize Jesus died faster than the, usual, the normal person would die on the cross. Mm. And they couldn't believe he was really dead, so they stabbed him in his side, they jabbed him in his side to prove that he was truly dead. They said, oh, no, you know, I'm like, how can you be faking it? You know, come on. But they wanted to prove it, okay? And so now here we go with the blood. And I begin to think about even the bread. I'm going to back up a little bit with the bread. We eat bread for nourishment for our body, right? Yes. And we need to, bread would represent our food, and we eat that. And the more food we eat, the nourishment comes. So because we remember him as the bread, ours, he's our spiritual bread, and he provides the nutrients that we need to walk on this spiritual journey, our word. We eat word, we read the word, we consume the word, yes. and we need that to make it on this way. But here's where the blood comes in. Just as our natural body, you can see the parallels between the bread and the blood also within our natural body. And within our natural body, we have the blood and we wonder what is the blood, what does the blood function for, right? And we know the blood is there to function for many for many different reasons. You know, our blood transports the oxygen from the lungs and the cells of the body where we need for metabolism and carbon dioxide and all different things. And, and if the blood doesn't function well, then there's problems. You know, sometimes we need the white blood cell count needs to be high. And when that's low, then we know there's issues. Or if we're not eating well, it affects the way the blood is going to flow and how the blood will clot and how it will be. And this is how we have to think about our blood. This is our natural blood. And there's times even with the blood, we have to get blood transfusions because we are lacking the blood or our blood's just not well. You know, I think about it, my mom had leukemia, so she would need the transfusions and transfusions, but after a while, your body just can't handle these yes. consistent transfusions. Yes. There's no more that your body can do because it just you're just sick at that point. But this is how it is. But and then we can take we can take medication. Sometimes people blood has gotten infected, so they would have to take some medication to clean, cleanse their blood while they're just walking around. They have to take something because there's an infection in the blood. But with the blood of Jesus, when we think about the blood, his blood, his blood has done far beyond what our blood does. His blood is not human blood. His blood can clean. His blood does way beyond more than we do. When we said the power of the blood of Jesus, his blood provides everything we need to live a life of victory, including redemption, fellowship, healing, protection, and authority over the devil. And the blood of Jesus came. Jesus died for us so that we no longer had to worry about um, finding a sacrifice like we did in the Old Testament. That was the Old Covenant. In Leviticus, it states that for the life of a creature is in the blood, and I give, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. And that is one of the reasons why we are powered by the blood, because God, Jesus came to make that atonement. And I think about it, if we were still under the old covenant, there would be a lot of us would be so lost, mm -hmm. or we couldn't afford, we couldn't even afford the animals to, um, to sacrifice or, 
or they'll be so scared, you know, because people constantly say, oh, I gotta go, I gotta get another one, or it'll be a shortage of a certain animal, because at the time, when they went, at the time when sacrifices was made, I'm not gonna go into the whole history of it, but she, um, God, he required certain animals to be sacrificed for certain things. So you had to make sure that you, you're using the appropriate animal and it couldn't have certain things about that animal. It had to be a newborn. It had to be different things. It was different criteria and requirements. So if we were still under that old covenant, I know a lot of us would just be, I, I probably be one of them, definitely. Me too. I would be lost. Me too. <laughs> because I just wouldn't be able to have it or it would be scared somewhere. But we thank God for the new covenant yes. and that Jesus came, yes. that he loved us so, yes. that he was willing to do all of this for us to make this atonement for us as we read in Hebrews 9, 11 through 23. We have talked about, we, we explained there from the opening scriptures of how the atonement came along and why Jesus came and why we are here today. And we just thank God for being powered by the blood. Yes. That we do not have to rely on even a priest to go in for us to right. see because sometimes they weren't always right. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to wait and hear if the bells is going to ring coming out and if you had to drag the person in who was going in for you, then you know you're like, oh my goodness, this just isn't working yeah. for me and my family really lost at this point. What are we going to do? But, but the blood of Jesus, he came so that we didn't have to worry about that anymore. He became that new covenant. So whenever we take of the wine and we participate or partake in the communion, we have to think deeper than, oh, this is just the blood of Jesus that was shed for me. But think about that when you're, it's, a, it's being symbolic to how you are powered by the blood every morning when you wake up. You may drink that wine once a month or whenever we have it, but, but you know that even if you didn't make communion that Sunday, that you still powered by the blood, right? Yes. That the communion doesn't make you powered by the blood. It's the blood of Jesus that makes you powered by the blood. And we are just participating. So think about that. So we're not going to say, oh, you have to have communion to be powered by the blood. No. We're doing it because he said, do it in remembrance of me. But what I want you to do is to think about every time you come to this communion, to think about the fellowship that we have together and that when we come here that we are all powered by the blood and being powered by the blood we are redeemed in Galatians 3 13 Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us you cannot tell me that's not love for it is written cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole then when we think about it, we have been snatched from the enemy. Wow. Ephesians 1 and 7. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. We are free. Galatians 5 and 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. And being powered by his blood, we have an assurance. Hebrews 10 and 22, let us draw near to God. For, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. And now even being powered by his blood, we are justified and spared from God's wrath. Yes. And we have Romans 5 and 9 and Romans 3, 24 and 5 since we have now been justified by his blood, 
how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Romans 3, 24 and 25. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. We are forgiven. I know I read this before. Ephesians 1 and 7. In him we have redemption through yes. his blood, yes. the forgiveness of sin, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. We are spiritually healed. 1 Peter 2 and 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds. We have been healed. Spiritually alive, John 6, 53, Jesus said to them, Verily, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And the last one I want to say, because I'm not going to be here long, we're going to wrap this up. We have victory and we are fearless. And that's Revelations 12, 11, and 1. They triumph over the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. And you know, this being powered empowers us even more to live a life that we're supposed to live and be in that reflection. So then as we take our communion, we are here as a community together yes. because when we leave one another, we go out into the world as another community right. wherever we That's go. Right. So every time you go somewhere else, you're in another community of people. So we're here, we just happen to be called the Community Church of God. But we're here as a community together. And our love for one another as we partake with our communion is not just being, we're also partaking into the death of Christ and remembering all those things that I said to you today, but also those things I didn't say that you know, and it was just too much to even cover in one sermon. But we, as those people, we're going to go out and we're going to spread God's love even more. And us being empowered by the blood, we're going to go and live a life to empower other people to be empowered by the blood of the Lord. Because this is part of his commandment that we will go out into the highways and byways and we will tell people we're not keeping it all for ourselves. We want to share in this because others need it along the way. And we want to help others because we know life can be hard at times. And we know like... It can weigh you down, but because you have that faith and you have that hope in God and you know there is something better and you know that he died for you, he called you friend. There is no greater love than a person who, a man who would lay down his life for a friend, right? So he called you friend. He sees you in a different way. And so how much more can we go out. We're not going to lay down our lives per se because that was already done and we can't do that, but we can give a part of ourselves to people to help and guide them along the way and take this power that you will be empowered by the blood to use it to help power somebody, empower somebody else that they will be powered by the blood. Yeah. So today, as we come into the table, when it is time, I want you to reflect on these things and think about communion in a different way as we move forward in our lives 
And as we come to the end of, even we're in the month of July, guys, okay? Before we know it, it'll be winter time and we'll be seeing a new year. If you haven't done it, do it. Yes. Make a difference before this year is over in somebody's life. Even just a smile. Say hello. It doesn't hurt to say hello. It doesn't cost us anything. And see, when you say that, you let people know I'm empowered by the blood because I can live and just walk even though I may have a cloudy sky somewhere. I know that I can see the breaking of day even in the midst of my cloudy skies because I'm powered by the blood of Jesus. I can make it through. So if I can show that to someone else and they not know what I'm going through and I can smile and we begin a conversation, we begin to know each other and then I share my testimony and it's like, you gotta be kidding me. You can't be dealing with these situations. No way possible. But I can come and tell you that there is someone greater. And I want you to come to the table with me so that you can have that experience of Christ. That you can experience his love and experience and know what it means to be powered by his love.